Join us for a drive down memory lane to take in a summer pastime that Nancy Giles tells us is making a comeback. Good evening. Good evening. How many tonight? Paul Geisinger was just 17 years old when he started working at Shankweiler's Drive-In Theater in Orfield, Pennsylvania. I hated drive-ins <laughs> with a passion. He even told his manager he wasn't going to stay long. I was only going to give him two weeks, and it's now 2020. <laughs> Paul and his wife Susan ended up running the place, now considered America's oldest operating drive-in. We have people that come now with their children that came here as, as And their children. grandparents, well, and their, their parents. parents. Yeah. There's like three or four generations, generations. of people here. Yeah. yeah. Shankweiler's opened in 1934, modeled after the very first drive-in that lit up Camden, New Jersey the year before. There were over 4,000 drive-ins across the country in the 50s. That number's faded away to 305 as of last year. Unfortunately, the land was worth more, and it most likely is in a lot of places, mm. worth more than what the drive-in business is worth. It seemed drive-ins were parked only on memory lane. Welcome back. Until this year. To the drive-in. With the pandemic, how has that sort of changed things? Has that revitalized people's interest? You know, we all have to stay distant. We have a lot, a lot of people that have never been out yeah. here before that have been coming out. For us, it has worked out very, very well. We've truly been very, very fortunate. These days, because the coronavirus and social distancing shut down nearly all indoor entertainment, going to a drive-in may be just the ticket. It's a communal effect without being overly social. I mean, that's what it's all about. Have you ever been to a drive-in movie before? No. Wow, this is your first time. Yes. Do you remember drive-ins? Did you ever go to drive-ins when you were a I kid? always wanted to. You've never gone? I never gone. What this about you, Ray? First time. Never, it's my first time. <laughs> yeah. What's old is new again. Only drive-ins aren't just off the interstate highways like they used to be. Like this wide open waterfront in Brooklyn, New York. Normally a backdrop for filming blockbusters, now the property has been screening blockbusters every night since June. And in other New York City boroughs, Rooftop Films, a nonprofit used to showing independent movies on, well, rooftops, we cannot have lights on. turned to drive-ins after film festivals were canceled this year. 60% of our programming is new independent films, and, and those are the movies that really would have no way to be seen whatsoever if not for uh, what we're doing. And Dan Nuxall is the artistic director. Honk your horns if you can hear me. In a way, it's almost like a really pleasant traffic jam, you know, <laughs> where we can all enjoy a movie while we're jammed in traffic. There's usually only a traffic jam right when the movie Getting ends. It. Otherwise, yes, traffic right. is nice and smooth. So, get the picture? Drive-ins are back, big time. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore and they're popping up in all sorts of places. From parking lots and shopping centers to restaurants where they serve more than just popcorn. <laughs> to the ocean. Even the retail giant Walmart put up free films outside 160 of their stores. I came to my husband and I said, hey, I want to do a pop-up drive-in movie theater. And he was like, okay. And I was like, this is why I married you. <laughs> and Siri and Ayana Morris of Newark, New Jersey, saw their chance with this old demolished baseball stadium. Or rather, they saw a need. Because of the racial tension during this time, I wanted to be able to create a space that highlights the beauty of black people and give us the opportunity to see something, see a positive image of ourselves. Now don't project your love of these new pop-ups back at Shankweiler's in Pennsylvania. Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. Paul Geisinger is a bit of a purist. If you really want to experience a drive-in, go to a real drive-in. That's, that's just my opinion. Sitting in the middle of a of McAdam parking lot just doesn't do it for me. Paul, I gotta tell you, sometimes it's kind of groovy. <laughs> Many of the pop-ups say they'll stay open long after summer even as indoor theaters slowly return. You must remember this. So who knows? Drive-ins might not fade to black after all. As time goes by.